coat has thoroughly dried, then you're going to apply a second coat. While the second coat is in the damp to wet stage, we are going to apply the patina finish. Now the patina can be applied in either of two, three different fashions. We can either brush, sponge, or spritz the patina on. I personally like to spritz it on, but then sometimes with a different finish, you can create another look by sponging. So when you have the patina bottle, you just take off the cap and put on the spritzer cap. Now one thing you want to make sure too, before you actually start, you want to make sure that you spritz the cap a few times to get the product flowing through it. And when you go to apply, you want to keep the bottle moving so you kind of have a misting on. Otherwise, if you stay in one spot, you'll get more of a donut look. So once the uh, second coat is applied, we're just going to take the patina and lightly spritz over. Depending upon how much, you can do it lightly or you can really wet it up. And within about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, we will really see some action going on to uh, get a sea wool sponge, pick up some of the copper metallic, and then even dip into the patina, and then come onto your surface and sponge, either leaving some of the base show through or base coated first with the, with the copper, and then come back and do the sponge effect over top of that. And that will give you another steel. And again, basic thing, make sure you shake it up real well. Sometimes you may have to get down in the bottle and stir it a little bit too, because you want to make sure you get it all mixed. Um, and then we're going to do the same procedure. One coat, let it dry. Second coat. And then we're going to apply the rapid rust. Now you can, when you pick up the bottle of the steel, you're going to feel the difference. It is much, much heavier than all the other colors because of the actual steel particles in it. And steel is a lot heavier metal than uh, gold or copper, for example. So again, we're going to make sure we have the spritzing going and we're going to mist over top of that. And then we should copper in the green patina and then a design is done over top of that after it had been sealed with pen and ink. If you get too much patina going on here, uh, what you can do to remove some of it, once it has thoroughly dried, and usually I like to wait overnight, you can take either a cloth or a grit pad, like a Scotch-Brite, and go over top of it to remove some of the patina. And then uh, you're ready to go. Or you can even come back and put some more copper back over top of it, either by streaking some on, sponging it, whatever. Even put another coat and the patina will work from the bottom. There's one that was done a little bit earlier and had time to set and, and dry. And you can see, I mean, I can touch it and nothing. One of the things about patina, when you rub your fingers across it and anything even outdoors, you will get a powdered effect on your fingers. So that is natural. So don't think that's there's something wrong that it's coming off. But before I show you the sealer, I want to show you where you can take this and take a little bit off to lighten it up. And then you can see where I've lightened it somewhat. For this one, it's a paintable wallpaper border. And this is showing you a base, the copper, and then the patina. Of course, this is a kind of things. Even a little shopping bag done up. So the sealer that we have is specially made just for this. And it goes on a little milky, 
but then it will dry clear and very matte. And I'm, uh, it's not a satin matte. I mean, there's no shine to it at all. So it will re-wet and re-wet <laughs> everything here. And try to smooth it out a little bit. And then just let this dry and you will have a finished piece.